Okay, folks, we're learning. Uh, we started this lab already. Have we've been waiting on kids? We've been installing the software, but we're going to be learning Inkscape. It's the equivalent of Corel Draw. It allows us to do vector graphics. Don't worry. Going to explain what vector graphics are, but why you might use them. Well, we use vector graphics when we want to be able to scale things, and we use vector graphics when we want to bring them into Tinkercad, which you know how to use. And down the road, I'm sure your school someday will get uh, down the road. You'll do a laser cutter. All right. All right, vector graphics, definition. Inkscape allows a software program that allows you to draw and edit vector graphics. It is free, it's open source, alternative to expensive software such as Adobe Illustrator. Vector graphics are the representation of images based on mathematical expressions. These graphics are based on vectors known as paths which lead through locations known as points or nodes. Other images like JPEGs, GIFs, and bitmaps, all right, and I went a little bit faster. Let's come back to that. I was about to jump on the next one. So we're going to use lines. We're going to call those paths, and they're going to lead through locations. We're going to call those nodes. Don't worry. You're not going to have to do math to do this, but it works on mathematical expressions. So size doesn't matter. Right? You can multiply three inches by two inches, you get six inches, right? Square inches. Or you can buy mile three feet, three miles by two miles, and you get six square miles. The math is the same, so don't worry, but that allows you scalability. All right, now, unlike bitmap graphics, or what's called a raster format, and don't memorize the format, for goodness sakes, don't do that. What that does, it's a grid of pixels. And the more pixels you have, the better resolution. Of course, that does create a bigger file. All right? So if you think about it, vectors are these paths that they calculate. They use more of a math base. Bitmaps are like pixels. We take each little pixels. Now, they both have their advantages and disadvantages. It's not like one's better, one you always should use, don't use the other ones. If you're taking pictures, you're probably doing raster. You know, they work really well for pictures. Okay? They work, so vector graphics aren't good for pictures, but they're good for things when you do, like letters or something you want to scale up and down. The fonts, the little font, you know, when you go Times New Roman on your computer numbers, those are vector graphics because we want to make the fonts any size. So, Primitives, simple geometric shapes such as points, lines, and curves, and polygons are combined to represent larger, or more complex shapes. Well, that's a fancy way of saying this. Look at this little tiger's nose. It's this. That whole, all these layers together make up what's called a cell. One layer is the brown. Second layer's got a little patch of brown. Third layer's white, you know, that pink, and then you got black. That all goes together to make the edge of the tiger's, uh, the little cub's nose. And that would get bigger and bigger and bigger. We use that, you know, that, that ability to go up bigger and down, uh, bigger and lower is really helpful. If Say you have a little business. You guys are, uh, you're bright kids, and you come up with some little device. You go on Shark Tank, it hits it. And your device is, um, I think, what you, are you guys the Bulldogs? What are, what's your uh, school, what's your school mascot, guys? Somebody write down here for me. Bulldogs, good, I was right. So, it's got the Battling Bulldogs ice remover with all the snow and ice everybody's having. So you're going to say, you got the Battling Bulldogs ice remover kind of deal. Well, you might want that on a small little USB thumb drive written there. Or you might want to, oh, we got a Spartan here too. Um, or you might want it on a big banner. Vectors are real good at that. And here's a perfect example. When you scale up a bitmap, or PNG or any of those, it'll start to look blocky where the vector doesn't. It's by the nature of how they're made. So if you don't want it to look blocky on a bitmap, you have to make the file, you got to have more and more pixels. It won't look as blocky. It'll have higher resolution. But that requires more data. Okay? So when we did, if you've done Scratch, you'll have seen this, and you may have done Scratch in the fall. Watch the kitty cat right here. Here's the kitty cat on the left. 
Here's the kitty cat on the right. On the left, vector graphics. On the right, bitmap. See how the one on the left looks really great that big up? Because it, we've blown them up. But you couldn't do this with a photograph. Photographs are almost always that raster graphics. Because we don't have good maths to dry, describe that. Are bitmaps easier to make? Uh, they're different. Bitmaps a lot of times are photographs, so if you take a picture, yeah, that's pretty easy. You upload the picture. Vector, you're drawing it out. Good question, though. Then you have vector graphics make ideal logos, because like I said, you go from that little s to the big S, where if you do a little with bitmap, or what's called raster, if you go a little s to big S, it gets blocky. Where on the right, you've got a little s goes to big S, it gets cool. It looks really sharp. All right? Any questions so far on this? This will lease nothing else in the class. This will help you know which graphics you need to use. You know, if you're going to do a lot of... Look, if you've got a bitmap picture, it's the right size, it looks good on your screen, great. It's when you want to be able to scale it up and down. So a lot of uh, print, you know, you're going to print and make your own uh, handouts and stuff. You want to use uh, vector graphics. Now, the good news is we've got using Inkscape. It's open source and it's free. It doesn't cost anything. Um, just so I'm going to say, on a PC, very easy to install. On a Mac, Mac you got to use um, XQuartz. It's this program, which is not that hard to do. You, just, uh, you First, you download and install XQuartz. This is only Mac users. And you've all installed, so you don't have to do it again, but I'm just saying it for everybody. You download it. You install it. This is just for Macs. Download and install XQuartz. Once you install it, log off or restart your computer. Then you're going to download and install Inkscape, drag it over your applications folder. It may ask you, hey, where's XQuartz the very first time? And then you just point it to the applications utility directory in the applications. You'll find XQuartz. The thing you got to be careful is don't bail on the next step. It will sit there and take several moments the very first time because what it's doing is Inkscape's going through all your fonts because those are all SVG files. So it'll take a while. It doesn't have a bar graph to tell you it's taking a while. I wish it did. I think it would be more helpful. All right? And so when you run it on a Mac, it's going to run under X quartz. If you're running it under a Mac, and we did this in preferences yesterday, change these preferences. Enable key equivalents under X11. Make sure this one is the same. Make sure under pasteboard you do update the clipboard. And you got to unclick primary middle key with the pasteboard change because you don't have a middle button on a Mac. That's one thing I never agreed with them on. Okay, now you're going to be using your. Um, let's go into Inkscape here. I'm going to bring it up, hopefully, here. We're going to learn some commands. So here's my ducky duck. All right, now, if I want to zoom up, I just roll my wheel. I can move to the right. Now, frankly, my, my wheel on my Mac does not do it much better than that. So then I have to go over here and put it back in the shape. All right. So roll your wheel up and down. You're going to see the picture goes up and down. Um, you hit the shift key, you can go left or right with it. On the Mac, mine's only going up and to the left because of the Mac. And then I use the plus key to blow it up, minus key to blow it down. It should look great when you blow it up or down. That's the advantage of a vector graphic. I'm using this duck. You don't need to use a duck. Just, in fact, now I'm thinking about it. Let's not even get rid of this said duck. Let's go ahead and draw, because you probably don't have your duck there, Miss. Let's click, click on a rectangle. There it is. I got a rectangle. Go ahead, pan back and forth, okay? No, no, you don't have to restart your computer. Well, I'm sorry you had to, Jaden. Sorry. All right. Everybody else, remember, use your mouse key, mouse button. You should be able to go up or down with it. Hold the shift T. You go left or right. Now, my Mac friends out there, that doesn't work really that well. Let's see if we can get it to hit the space bar. Again. Oh, I did not want to do that. Why did I do that? Tell me like that. Come on. 
I don't know if I just get what happened there. Let's try it again now. I'm going to hit plus. I'm zooming in with my plus. I zoom out with my minus. Let's draw. I'm going to draw something else in here again. And I'm going to click here, take that rectangle, and then I click on a color, and it'll immediately fill it with that color. Green is hideous. What was I thinking? Click on any other colors before you go again. It'll just keep filling it up. Oh, my goodness, Mr. Dubik, what are you thinking? There it is. Here's my preferences on rectangles. All right, let's hit this. All right, now hit the space bar. You get a square. If you pull one of these out on the angle, see, pulls it from the side. You pull diagonals, it pulls it rather proportionally. Pull it up there, pull it over here, pull it down. If you hit it, if you hit the control key while you do it, always keeps it in scale. Hit the control key, pull it out. It'll always keep it in scale. Ray, go ahead and do that real quick, folks. I know for some of you, you did this last week, but we're going to kind of pick it up here, and we'll keep hitting it. Raise your hand once you've done that. And if you're here last year, week, you know if I click this again, I get the little angle, I can turn that. And again, if I hit the command uh, control key, I'll turn it. A certain number of degrees every time, 15 degrees. Okay, practice all that, folks, and raise your hand. Draw a rectangle, pan around it, you know, go up and down, zoom in on it a little bit, zoom out, hit the minus. I only have one person saying they can do this. So make sure everybody else, let me know when you do it. Don't be just playing with it. Don't tell us. Now, if you need more time, by all means, take it. But just make sure and let us know, okay? Um, are we getting this print? Are we getting this set, buddy? Let us know. You were here. I think you know how to do this. Austin, 
We getting it, man. All right, everybody raise your hand once you have it. I have no way of knowing. All right, we got 82%. I'm going to go ahead and go on now. Okay, over here on the left, there's your pointer. That's your selection tool. We're going to come to this path or edit paths down the road, nodes, and this is where we sculpt it. Here's where the different objects. Here's a circle. We can draw that. Again, an oval. I'm going to draw it there. I go down here to change the color to something a little bit. Uh, let's go to something so it's different enough we can figure out what we've got here. So that's blue now. Hit my space bar again. All right. Again, if I just pull it on that, that's and that diagonal is proportional. But if I pull it here, it's wider here. Let's look up at the screen right up here. You have X and Y. When I take that watch up here, by the way, this is out of my printed area of the screen, so don't worry about it. So X and Y, that's the location. What about y, W and H? Well, that's my height. So I'm going to pull this up here. See how it's getting higher. Now it's getting wider. All right? And it's in points. You can do it in feet and percentages and everything else. Um, just stay in that pixel kind of range there, that PX, I should say. All right, now, I would like you to please take your object. Again, go up here so we see X and Y, and you can even change it up there. So this X is to the left, so it's at negative 950. Watch if I make it uh, negative 100. It'll move it. Watch. Over here to the right. Okay, and if you look up at the top of the screen, there's zero, right? Zero pixels. Negative 100, positive 100. But I can move them around and see a change. This is going to be important down the road if you're really trying to line something up perfectly well. All right, put Ryan's hand down there. Okay, let me know. All right, we've gotten that. I think Ryan probably put his hand up saying he already did it. Let's get the next group. Come on. Once you've done this, guys, you've taken the object. Let me know. Ryan, I think you had your hand up. Put your hand back up if you've gotten it done. Good job, Hope. Lauren, let's go. Jacob, Austin, if you've got it, let us know. Let us know. Let us roll. Let it snow. All right. Good job, everybody. Keep hitting it. Okay, it's not working. What is not working? It's not working. We'll have to get it later. Jaden, I'm not sure. All right, you're just going to follow. I hope you're just going to follow me now, buddy. I'm not sure why it shouldn't be working, but let's try a little bit later there, all right? Now, we can also do things like this with it, where we move this object here, and you can do move things where you're in front or behind the objects. Say I'm right here. Right now, the blue one is from the black one. But what I can do, I can move, if I look over here, come on up here, click that down. Now I move the blue one behind the black one. There's different layers. Now I got the blue above the black brown. Now I have at the very top. I put it moved back to the bottom. Up here. Let me get my hopefully I can bring this right up and we'll show it. So we're going to Inkscape Basics. We're learning how to use these objects right here. We're selecting from them. We did blue, just click and drag. You fill, if you double click, you can change the fill. By clicking another color right after you draw it, you'll be able to uh, change the colors. You get very specific colors. There's ellipse, star and spirals. There's the pointer tool. Let's go. Um, you know. Uh, 
let's come down here changing so we got moving and scaling we started to do that we can move it scale it and there we go grabbing that green handle which we've been doing and if you hold the, down the control key it'll always keep the scale um, click it a second time you can start spinning it around control it 15 degrees I'll show again and there I showed you X and Y is the location Y, W and H is the height and width All right. move objects in front or behind other objects here we go All right. These buttons allow for the quick rotation 90 degrees or flipping horizontally or vertically. So here we go. So let me go ahead and we just started using these buttons up here, the line and distribute, and we'll show you this in a minute. This is kind of a strange one. In fact, let me go back here exactly. Wait a minute. There's a cross member here I want to show you right now. We're going to go over here back over. I'm going to go back into um, Inkscape. So let me take a new object. I'm going to go over here, pick out one of the stars. I'm going to make a blue star. And now I'm going to change that blue star to this color. My goodness, that's, that's hideous. All right. So we hit the space bar. Let's try this again. Once twice now I can turn it there's a little X there you can't really see it and if I grab it I can turn the star around there's a little bit of a little drag as you do it right now over here I go again there's that star but I can move the star and then I can pick it on a point here and move the star right or oh I didn't mean to do that all right let's try it again now when I rotate it it rotates around that part of the star Okay, so can I get everybody to do that for me, please? Let's go through this again. I'm going to hit the space bar. First time through, that changes scale. But if I hit it, if I hit it a second time, I click on that star a second time, I can rotate it. There's going to be a little star, generally, that shows up, a little plus. My plus is up here because I moved it. I'm going to move it back down here. Yours is going to be in the center, right where my cursor is. You'll see it. And that allows you to turn it right around that star, you know, that plus. But the plus can be grabbed, like I can move it along this point right here. And then I can move it, whoops, again, use the rotation, don't move it. That's where Mr. Dubik keeps messing up. Okay. Everybody, let's try to do it. Raise your hand. I'm going to put everybody's hands down. Raise it once you've got your star spinning around like that. Excellent. Okay. Now, let me see as we keep going here. I'm going to launch this poll real quick, just get a sense of how we, how's my pacing going, guys. Please vote. We got 75. I want to go. Got 
Got a couple more. Please vote. We're at 92%. Five, four, three, two, one. Close the poll. Let me share the results. This is what you always face, teacher. I got 17% saying, hey, you're going a little too fast there, Mr. D. 8% saying, oh, my gosh, let's go. You're going way too slow. And about 75% saying, I'm going about right. So we're recording this. You'll get a chance to rewatch for those. I will try to slow. I may slow just a touch down, or I'll make sure I go back over the complicated topics of this a little bit better. All right. Now, we just did all that. This sets the x coordinate and the y coordinates. This makes the object itself wider and taller, basically. It says height. And we talk about moving objects in front of one another. And, and we just did that a second ago. And you can align them. This one, there's supposed to be this icon on your computer. Mine doesn't show up. I have to do Shift-Control-A to bring mine up. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This should be up here. Part of it is I'm running the webinar software, which kind of messes with it a little bit. But it should be over here. On mine, it's not. So, But if I hit Shift, Control, A, it should be, and over on the right-hand screen, it should pop up. Let's see here. Oh, why didn't I do that? Let me do one more real quick. Shift, Control, A. Here it is. Align and distribution. It should have this icon. I'm going to bring it right there so you all can see it. See it right there? Shift the line. You should have that icon somewhere. Mine's gone away for some whatever reason. This will allow us to line all our things up. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So I move this over here. And I've got one over here. And I've got one kind of over here and here. But I want them all lined up. If I select all three of them, and then I select this icon right here, it's going to move them to the right side. Watch. See how now they're all lined up according to this right side. These are, I don't know if the other two are, the star was selected. Let's try this again. Now I got all three of them. Let's move them all to the left edge. There they go. Now they're lined up because that's where the white is on that. Um, here's the right edge. It's going to be based off the stars that move. It's sitting the edge. Because that's the biggest object usually does that, right? And then this is going to crunch them all together. If I do this, this would set them all up off the top. Or you can get stuff that centers on a horizontal axis. Let's try this. So it's centered this way. So you can keep playing with this. Now they're all centered behind it. Now it's centered to the left. So it's quite a um, mess. If I control Z, I can re-undo everything. So again, hit to bring this choice up. If line and distribute isn't on there, you need these for lining and distributing up. It's the um, control um, shift A key. Well, at least that's what brought mine up. Okay. Don't tell me. I okay. Share results. Let's see what that says. I can't draw anything in Inkscape. I'm not sure what's going on um, at this point. When you say you can't draw anything, what does that mean? That's very frustrating. I'm, I'm very sorry. What's going on? Um, what What do you say? Um, it's like. If I try like to bring a shape down, it just will show a box with no shape in it. What do you mean a box with no shape in it? You mean like this box tree right tree. there, like my box right here? Uh, no, like a dotted box with just no shape in it. Um, all right, how use your plus and minus to see if it zooms in and out. Now, you're doing this. You're clicking on the box. Then you're clicking out where you want the box. You use the left key, and you're dra dragging it in, right? Yeah. Hmm. And you installed, or what are you running, Mac or Windows? Oh, Windows. What year, Windows? Oh. Uh, 
Let me just ask that. Windows, well, um, why don't we stay after? I'm not going to, I'll come on for you a minute. You got Windows 7, bud, or what version of Windows are you running? Uh, I'm in Windows 7. Okay. That is very strange to me. Folks, did anybody else have this problem? And if they did, did you have a fix for it? Let me ask you, because I'm running a Mac on this. I just asked that out for the entire folks. Um, we'll have to Google and troubleshoot this, and I'll go ahead and do that in a few minutes. Let's see. Anybody else seen why that's happening? Because what you're, what are you getting? Just a series of dashes, did you say? Uh, yeah. Okay. Did you try? Um, no one else said. Did you try hitting the plus key to see if you're not just, we had, you're not too far out or? Let me try something. Yes. Yes, yes, I did. So, like, see how far out mine is? You're not that far out, right? Hit the plus no. key and get in there as close as you can. Yeah, I'm getting as close as I can, so. Hmm. That is very strange. I'm not sure why that's doing it either. Let me, we'll, we'll search. When, when the class is over, let's look together a little bit. Maybe we can figure it out. All right. I'm going to hang you up here. Just hang on. I'm muting you. Okay? All right, now, we got a question over here. Oh, his shape might be completely opaque. There's a thought. Oh. Let me ask you something, buddy. Draw a rectangle, okay? It's a great idea. Okay. John said that. Let's go up and draw a rectangle, draw it pretty big, and then go right down to the color and pick a color off of it. So let me see. Okay. So I draw that in there, it'll be red. And then go down and pick a color. Any of them. Yeah, I did. Did you get anything color out of it? No. Does your um does your pointer do what mine does to go to a red like this? Oh uh, yeah, it does. And so if you click once, if you click and hold it, don't just click once, click and hold it and drag it, drag it out. What does it do? Um, it just gives me that empty box. Okay, I got. I have no idea. That was a great sound. That's why. Try zooming out. Okay. <clears throat> Hitting the plus and minus, seeing if you get any difference. No. Okay, well, just hang on. Let's get everybody else. Let's get through some more of this class with everybody else, and we'll come back to yours. Okay? Okay. All right. I was hoping that would be one of those two things. All right. Now, if you hit Control-D, you can copy everything, but it'll be right on top of the existing object, which will throw you. So, like, watch right here. So, if I hit the space bar, so I have a pointer, click on this once, and I hit Control-D, Looks like nothing happened, but in reality, if I move it, I've just created a different object. So make sure everybody tries that now, please. All right. All right, now this will get us in perfect. This will get us to a perfect spot to this next thing. 
I'm putting everybody's hands down because we're going to practice this, and then next week we can do it, and then we can start doing our turning our Tinker Cat in and start our printing away. Are okay. Okay, here we go. Now, let's go ahead Let's go ahead, if you would. Doesn't control V copy it uh, using a Mac there. It's command, uh, it's control D that I'm worried about. And no, it does. Okay. Just use control D, not V. Okay. All right. Now, here's what we're going to do we're going to take raster, which is a PNG bitmap graphic, and we're going to convert it to vector. This will allow us to bring in pictures into your Tinkercad file so you can make your own things. Let's say you need a duck graphic for a scratch game. That'd be one idea. Let's say we want a duck graphic for a, we're going to make our own uh, uh, checker and we want a duck graphic to go on our 3D printer or a laser cutter. That's what we would do. So what we're going to do is you could search for an SVG file that would work right there. I'll show you how this works. The key is once you search duck under images, click on this and go to advanced search. Once you do advanced search, type in the file type SVG files. Those are vector based files. You've got duck up there, and this will bring them all right up for you in SVG format. All right. So let's go through that again. If you need an SVG file, go to duck. Go to Google, like you're going to search it, select images. And then under search, you can do these advanced settings. Go to advanced search, select duck, select SVG file, and you can get this. Plus, there's a format deal. So, like, watch me right here. I'm going to search duck. All right. Images. I'll just even type it up at the top of the brown. There it is. So if you go under images, all right, so that gets me starting to duck. Now what I can do is right here, that little options button, I'm going to go into advanced search. Oh, and there it is right at the top of the screen there. I want it. All right, duck image. And now it says any type or any file. Hey, this is the format I want. I want SVG. Then I do advanced search. These are all these will all these pictures right here will go into a 3D printer, will go into a laser cutter, can be scaled, the whole nine yards. All right. However, what usually happens is the picture you want is not in an SVG format. It's in a bitmap or PNG format. So what do we do? And that's what we're going to with the class. We're going to figure out how to do that. So it allows us to take this raster image and copy it and make it into a vector image. All right, so what I want you to do is raise your hand once you've gone to Edmodo and you've downloaded the duck that says duck.jpg, I think it's JPEG, JPG. Raise your hand if you've done that. Everybody else, please do that now. So even though we probably won't get to very much of this now, we're all set when we come in mo Monday of next week and we get this done. And then we can, you know, get practicing and working on our projects.
All right, guys, the other people, please download that file. So then what you're going to do, once you've downloaded the file, you go into Inkscape, and you're going to import it. So here we go. I'm going to do File New. And then I'm going to do File, Import. You can export things as a PNG, PNG if you want to do just the reverse. So then I'm going to go down to my downloads. I hope it's there. Uh, you can tell. Okay. Well, that's February 24th, so it's not there. Let's go back on Thomas Dubik. Sometimes my computer plays games with me. Let's go Thomas Dubik. See if it's on desktop. There's duck right here. Do, do duck PNG, not duck is SVG. And let me see if I can find my duck uh, for this. Or at least I thought I downloaded. I may, I guess I did not download that duck yet, but I will in a moment. Here we go. Is it there? Uh, the wrong duck. Oh, shoot. Okay, hang on one second. I'm just going to pause. This is the, you're going to see something in this effect with the duck to download it there. So I'm clicking on it. Which we converted to SVG. This is what we'll use to do that. All right. Let's see, it should be attached. And since I shared it, I've got to go to my library. I'm going up here to load it on library items. So let me see if I can go ahead and get it to download now. Save image as duck to my desktop. All right, there it is. I've got it now. Let's go back to Inkscape. File, new. File, import. Now we go to desktop. There it is. Duck JPEG. So I say open. All right. Now, you can do image types, etc. Let me show you on this. Bear with me one second. Let's go back over to here. So you're going to do import. You're going to do smooth, optimized quality. Make sure you select that one, all right? And then trace bitmap if you need to. So that will be the next thing after we do that. But right now, you're going to do hit smooth on that. So let's go to Inkscape. All right, smooth. We're going to say OK, boom. All right. OK. And then what we're going to do after that, when you come back, save this file. So that way we have these. We don't have to worry about it. Save as. I'm going to just say... Uh, duck drawing to begin with drawing SVG and just save alright so that way I can come back later and I'm gonna pull this up as duck drawing SVG and we're gonna show you how to improve this okay any other questions on this got some hands raised let's see uh, move never mind is fit okay how do you download it Okay, good. John got it down there. Great. So that's what we're going to cover today. So we'll be set to get the duck. I'll show you within a few minutes where we're going with this. It's kind of cool because we can make a cookie cutter out of this. Watch. We're going to learn how to trace it. And then look at this. See, we get edge detection and things. You can trace pictures out of there. We're going to go through and do this. But here's what I want you to see. Now you can take it. We can take our duck that we have here into this image. Get it perfect. We'll show you how to do it. There's a couple steps here. Don't worry, I'm going really fast. I wouldn't expect you to be able to do it. 
You import it. Here's the duck in Tinkercad. Not surprisingly, you should figure that, hey, that'd be a pretty cool way to make a cookie cutter, wouldn't it? Get some dough and cut out your own cookie ducks. Are you interested in, all right, put everybody's hands on it. Are you guys all, in, are you guys interested in making cookie cutters out of a 3D and do some other things too, but are you interested in making a cookie cutter out of your 3D printer? Using, taking something in 3D and make a cookie cutter out of it. Then you can make everybody your own cookies. You could take your favorite Star Wars comic book character, favorite person in a book, Hermione and Harry Potter, whatever. How neat would that be, huh? All right. Well, that's what we've got for today. We'll hit it next Monday. And I appreciate your patience, everybody. Good job. Um. All right. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to stop recording this.